What's up everyone? My name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com. If you are brand new to trading or are curious about trading at all, I want to let you guys know about a free two-hour mentorship course that I put together with my mentor, Bao. It is available at MyInvestingClub.co. The link is going to be right here. This is a free webinar with limited seating every week, so please click on the link and reserve your spot before the time runs out. Also, a special bonus for all of our viewers on YouTube. So if you guys have any questions about MIC or you're curious about joining or uh, you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you. Uh, you can now text Tosh, who is one of our head mentors and head moderators at MIC, and he'll answer any questions you have about MIC. His phone number will be in the link in the description, and it'll also be right here. Thank you guys for watching, and enjoy the video. If, this, if today's your first webinar, welcome. Here, here's going to be the lay of the land here. I'm going to go over the key traders of the week. Primarily, I only go over the ones I trade, but if you guys want me to go over ones that I haven't go over, just post it in there, say, hey, can you take a look at that one too? And I'll get to it. We're going to go over the market sentiment as I feel that's super important week to week to just know where we're at. Like, it's funny, uh, James Friedlander and Tosh were talking this morning about how, dude, this market, like the last few days have been tough in the market um, because of the, the strength. And like, if you've been following the, the webinars, like, I, like for the last week, week and a half, or the last week or two, I'm like, you know, that, that strong market's coming, right? Like if you keep track of the sentiment, then it kind of helps prepare you for what should be coming. Yeah, again, this is the fine balance between anticipating it, and I always tend to do that. Like when I feel like the buyer's market's coming, I tend to anticipate a couple of longs that I shouldn't, but the fine line. Just knowing when they're coming help. It's an advantage. Anyway, there's a trader topic I want to talk about, about hiking. Then we're going to get into um, the strategy of the, of the simplest short. And then we're going to end with Q&A. But, um, you know, but kind of like what I like to do is if you have a question that pertains to what we're talking about, then I'll try to answer it as we go. Just go ahead and type it. So, yeah, let's get going. So, yeah, so GNPX was... Kind of like the hot chick of the day. This was the mover that kind of started the the comeback for the, you know, we had a lull after the coronavirus hype kind of faded a little bit and GNPX kind of brought uh, everything back. So it was definitely the hot chick of the day. And I like, I saw that it was the hot chick of the day. And I, I wasn't sure if it was going to be the hot chick of the day, like, you know, right at the open. Like I knew it was the, the biggest potential, but you know, some sometimes the biggest potential is like crap at the open and some other one takes the news. But you know, it was, it, you know, I knew it was a possibility. And the second that we got that strength on the opening candle, I knew it was. So my, my, my goal for this was kind of like BBI. Uh, I was just, I, I was literally just going to ignore it. I like, I saw GNPX. I'm like, I'm not trading this bullshit. Right. I kind of just went over that, but it's not recorded because I almost missed hitting record. Basically, I just talked about like if you trade the hot chick of the day, be prepared for it to be a pain in the ass, essentially. But and so anyway, I thought so I was just going to ignore it. But I'm like, you know what? There's a couple scalps that could probably just, you know, make a few bucks here and there off it. So I, uh, I, I traded at the open. I cut that shit immediately. Like I, I didn't even wait to profit on that. I took that off for a break even scalp. But then I, I saw a nice opportunity. You know, I didn't have any conviction on this all day, right? So that's that's what that's why I was just quick scalps on it. Anyway, like here, when I was watching this stock, like if you want to replay this, like in Think or Swim or something, like this was not giving any relief to the shorts at all. And right around here, this was a very fast, hard move. And right here, like this is so vertical, so abrupt. I was like, okay, that's everybody. Just that's an exhaustion. That's an exhaustion push up. That's straight covered because I, as a longer, I know like that's not really like longs truly buying. Like no longs gonna chase that up. That was literally just an exhaustion cover from the people who built in a short position all the way here and four. You know it it you know rejected four, made a little higher low, and then like pushed through four like in an instant. I was like that is straight up just covers going off. So I was like I think that's an emotional exhaustion scalp opportunity. So I took it, right? I did the same thing here at five. I thought like this, that, you know, when moves happen so abruptly on a whole number, normally whole numbers offer some kind of resistance. And when it just like blurts right through it like that, I immediately think covers. So I like, you know, I just took, you know, I waited for it to, uh, by the way, this order was not here already. I actually had a five short over here and missed narrowly. That was going to be a scout. I missed it by inches. And so like when it came back, I had canceled the order, but then when it blew through five and kind of rejected a little bit, I'm like, that's covers. That's a, that's a nice quick scalp opportunity, but it didn't even go as low as I wanted. So like it kind of stalled here at 480 for a minute. I gave it one minute. Like I was like, I don't like this stall. I covered it. Good thing I did. So I got a couple scalp. This is a little quick first bounce trade. I tried. I, I was probably impatient with it. I just covered it. I didn't like that. It didn't. I, I, I was expecting this kind of move right away because it was just not giving any, this was the first relief the stock had had since like three. I'm like, like, you know what, like if it just doesn't like ramp up on this bounce, like maybe we're due for a pullback. So I kind of got a little nervous, but 
then the pullback came. Anyway, I'm just looking to scalp, so I don't, no, you know, no blood, no foul. And so that's how I traded GMPX very carefully, just quick scalps only. Is 3% of an account risk too aggressive? Uh, well, I don't know. For big money, I think that's kind of aggressive. But I don't know. If you have a smaller account, I, th I mean, it's necessary, like, so I think. I mean, I think the standard is like 1% per trade. But, I mean, that's if you have a big enough account to make 1% trades worth it. Do you recommend paper trading or diving in with super small size? I always rec- I mean, so if you're a blanket newbie, paper trade. If you've been studying for a while, paper trading is not going to help you. Like, so if you study for a while and you want to start trading, paper trading, if, if you, if you kind of like know the basic basics, dive in with tiny size, like make it real. Trade five shares, five shares, unless you're like trading a broker, which $10 a trade, then don't do that. If it's a per share basis and there's like a minimum of $1 a trade or something. Okay, so locate 100 still, trade five shares. It's, you know, like whatever, just make it real. Like trade 10 shares then, like 20. Whatever like you feel won't affect you at all, but it's as close to real money trading as you think you're gonna get. I generally kind of catch the support areas on the dips for trades, but then I don't, then I, because you're afraid. Am I being risky with this thesis? I mean, it all depends. Like. I mean, how, you know, like what the situation, why is it dipping to your lines? How drastic is it? How fast is it? What's the flow? Like, is it just after a VWAP crash? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of stuff matters. So yeah, like I, I'm not the kind of trader that trader that just uses technicals. Like just like, I, I want to know like what's causing the move. I, like I try to build a story around my thesis. You know, if you're purely a technical trader, I don't think you're being risky as long as you have risk management checks like in place. I normally use my lines like, I, like if I draw a line, it's from the daily chart first, and then it's from it's from the daily chart, then it's from free market, and then once intraday lines are established, I use those. So those are the order. So yeah, I would have this from 95 cents. I'd have that. I would have this line. Um, I wouldn't have this line until this move happened. What's Toka? Let's see on the daily chart. I would definitely have 110. I would definitely have 110. I would have 70, 80, and 80. I'd have 110, 80, and 70. And I wouldn't have this one until this happened. I wouldn't have 95 until it happened. You know, free market. So that's that's how I draw the lines. Whew. All right, later everybody. Good questions, guys. I'll see you guys in the morning. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.